All right, so you send in this video about fruits and kidney health. And honestly, my first reaction was like, really? Fruit? What's the big deal? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, fruit's supposed to be good for you. But then I started looking into it. Yeah. And wow, there's a whole lot more to the story, especially when it comes to kidneys. So we're going to deep dive into this. Absolutely. Uncover some surprising truths about fruits and how they can, well, maybe not be the best friend to your kidneys. Yeah. And especially for people dealing with chronic kidney disease, CKD. Right, CKD. It's a serious condition. And a lot of people don't even realize they have it until it's pretty advanced. It's true. It can be very sneaky. Yeah. So early detection is key. Absolutely. And diet plays a huge role in managing CKD. So let's unpack this video you sent. Let's do it. See what we can learn. Now, the big thing here, the thing that really stood out to me is potassium. Potassium. Yeah. We all need potassium, right? It's an essential mineral. Helps our muscles work. Keeps our heart beating. The whole shebang. But for folks with CKD... Too much potassium can actually be a problem. That's right. Because... Because their kidneys, well, they aren't working at full capacity. Right. So they can't filter out the excess potassium as efficiently. Ah. So yeah. it starts to build up in the bloodstream. And that's where we get into trouble, right? Exactly. The video mentioned hyperkalemia. Yeah, hyperkalemia. Which sounds a little scary, to be honest. It can be. It's essentially a potassium overload. Okay. And that can lead to all sorts of problems. Muscle weakness... Irregular heartbeats. Wow. In severe cases, it can even be life-threatening. Okay, so definitely not something to mess around with. So let's dive into these nine fruits the video highlighted. Okay. These are the ones that can be particularly tricky for people with CKD. But before we do that, I'm curious. Yeah. When you were first learning about all of this, what fruit surprised you the most in terms of its potassium content? You know, it's funny, but it was the avocado. Really? The avocado. I know, right? Everyone thinks of avocados as the superfood. Yeah, healthy fats. Good for you. Exactly. But then you look it up and bam, almost a thousand milligrams of potassium in a single avocado. Wow. It's like a potassium bomb disguised as a creamy, delicious fruit. Yeah, it's crazy how some of these seemingly healthy foods can have a whole other side to them. Okay, well, let's start with the fruit that's practically synonymous with potassium. The banana. The banana, yeah. It's a classic, but not always a friend to the kidneys. Right. One medium banana packs about 422 milligrams of potassium. That's a lot. It is, especially if you're trying to manage your potassium intake. So, so for people with CKD, maybe not the best choice for daily snack then. Not necessarily. You know, it's all about moderation. Right. Portion control. Exactly. So maybe half a banana instead of a whole one. And pair it with some lower potassium fruits, like berries. Good idea. Speaking of which, what about oranges? They're always touted as a great source of vitamin C. Right. Vitamin C powerhouse. But are they hiding a secret potassium punch? Well, they do contain potassium. It's true. How much are we talking? A small orange has around 237 milligrams. Okay, so not as high as a banana. No, but still something to consider. Especially if you're having more than one. Exactly. It's all about being mindful. So maybe swap that afternoon orange for some strawberries or blueberries. Yeah, good alternatives. Okay, we've got bananas, oranges. Mm -hmm. What's next on our potassium parade? Let's talk about a fruit that often flies under the radar. The tomato. Tomatoes. Yeah, tomatoes. I mean, we usually think of them as vegetables. I know, but technically they're a fruit. Interesting. And they're in so many things. Oh, absolutely. Sauces, soups, salads, everywhere. Right. And while one tomato might not seem like a big deal, yeah, it's about 292 milligrams of potassium per medium tomato. Okay. But it's the cumulative effect, you know? You have a big plate of pasta with tomato sauce. Right. You could be getting a lot of potassium without even realizing it. Exactly. So maybe it's about being aware of those hidden tomatoes. Yeah. And choosing lower potassium alternatives when you can. Like what, what could you use instead of a tomato-based sauce, for example? You could try pesto or a creamy white sauce. Oh, good ideas. Or even just load up on other veggies. Right. Like Bell peppers, cucumbers. Exactly. Lots of options. Okay, there. so we've got bananas, oranges, avocados, tomatoes. Mm -hmm. What else is lurking in the potassium shadows? How about a summertime favorite? Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe, huh? Yeah, it seems so innocent, all sweet and juicy. Right. But one cup of cantaloupe has around 431 milligrams of potassium. Wow, that's more than I would have thought. I guess you can't judge a fruit by its sweetness. Nope, definitely not. All right, well, knowledge is power, right? <laughs> At least now I know. Exactly. You can make informed choices. Okay, so five fruits down, 
for to go. We're on a roll. What's next? Let's talk about dried fruits. Dry fruits. Yeah, they seem like a healthy snack, right? Yeah, I mean, they're fruit. But remember, they're concentrated. Oh, right. All the water is removed. Exactly. So you're essentially getting a more intense dose of everything, including the potassium. So those little boxes of dried apricots or raisins, maybe not the best choice for someone with CKD. Right. A handful of dried apricots can have over 300 milligrams of potassium. Wow. More than a fresh apricot. Yeah. It's something to be aware of. Okay, so we've covered bananas, oranges, avocados, tomatoes, cantaloupe, dried fruits. Mm -hmm. We're making good progress here. Yeah. What else is on our list? Let's talk about kiwi. Kiwi, okay. It's a great source of vitamin C and antioxidants. Right. But it also contains a decent amount of potassium. How much? About 215 milligrams per medium kiwi. Right. So another one to enjoy in moderation. Right. What about pomegranates? They're supposed to be really good for you. Oh, they are. Packed with antioxidants, lots of health benefits. But what about potassium? Well, they do contain potassium, about 236 milligrams per half cup of seeds. Okay, so maybe not a free-for-all then. And here's an interesting thing. Pomegranate juice is even more concentrated in the potassium than the seeds. Really? Yeah, so if you're watching your potassium, stick to the seeds and maybe skip the juice. Wow, good to know. It's amazing how much there is to learn about these fruits. Yeah. Okay, we've got one fruit left on our list. Last but not least, we have mangoes. Mangoes, delicious. They are tropical, good source of vitamins A and C. Ah. But they also contain a fair amount of potassium. How much are we talking? A medium mango has around 257 milligrams. Okay, so like many of the other fruits we've discussed, mangoes in moderation. Exactly. Well, we did it. We covered all nine fruits from your video. We did. That was a lot of information, but... Hopefully it was helpful. Yeah, I think the big takeaway here is that knowledge is power. Absolutely. The more you understand about how food impacts your body, mm -hmm. the better choices you can make for your health. Couldn't agree more. And before we move on, I just want to emphasize, this isn't about demonizing fruit or saying you can never eat it again. Right. Fruit is still a valuable source of nutrients. It can absolutely be part of a healthy diet, even for people with CKD. Absolutely. It's just about being informed, making smart choices, Working with your healthcare team, getting personalized advice. Okay, so as we wrap up this deep dive into fruits and kidney health, what's the one big takeaway you want our listeners to remember? You know, I think it's this. Don't be afraid to question what you hear about food. Okay, question everything. I like that. Because we're always hearing, this is healthy or that's bad for you. Right, like fruit is always good. Exactly, but it's not always so simple. It's more complicated than that. It is. Our bodies are all different. Right, different needs, different reactions. So what works for one person might not work for another. So it's not just about fruit. It's about everything we eat. Exactly. Be curious. Do your research. And don't just take things at face value. Right, and most importantly, listen to your own body. That's so important. How do different foods make you feel? Exactly. If something doesn't feel right, maybe it's not right for you. And don't be afraid to talk to your doctor or a dietitian. Right. They can help you figure things out. They can help you create a plan that works for you. Okay. Well, I think that's some great advice. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. It has. We covered a lot of ground. We did. But hopefully our listeners learned something new and maybe even feel a little more empowered to make healthy choices. That's what we hope for. And to everyone listening, thank you for being part of the deep dive. We love your curiosity, your willingness to explore these topics with us. It means a lot. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And let us know what other deep dives you'd like to hear. We're always looking for new ideas. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring. And keep diving deep. See you next time. Bye, everyone.